This is G485 Homework Booklet, question number three. First of all, we're asked to define electric field strength. It is the force per unit positive charge. Remember, this equation is given in the data sheet, and really that is giving you the definition if you carefully put it into words. Next, you're asked to draw the field lines to show the field between two horizontal parallel plates. Make sure you draw these diagrams accurately. The marking points required are that the lines must be parallel and equally spaced and that the arrows on them must be in the correct direction. So from positive to zero in this case. A final warning here, if you don't use a ruler to draw a diagram like this, you do risk losing marks. In the next part of the question, we consider an electron passing between uh, these two parallel plates. And we're first asked to consider the direction of the acceleration of the electron. So this will be in the same direction as the direction of the force and the electron would be attracted towards the positive plate. Now before moving on, look at the other data that you have been given. We have the original horizontal velocity of electrons entering the field. Uh, we also have the horizontal length of each plate and we have the separation of the plates given to us. We're also told that the point P is midway along the length of the plate. So the next part of the question asks us to show that the acceleration is a given value. The acceleration will depend on the force um, but the force will defend, depend on the field strength, so we actually first have to work out the electric field strength. Note uh, I have selected E equals V divided by D. There are three equations for E on the data sheet. You need to know that this one is relevant for parallel plates. Then just substitute in the potential difference and the separation of the plates and you will achieve the first mark of the electric field strength. Now acceleration is force per unit mass. Once we know an electric field strength, the force on any charge will be its charge times the strength of the field. Substitute those values and divide by the mass of the electron. This was a show that question, so the mark is for this correct substitution, and you need to show it. The next part of the question asks you to find the time for an electron passing between the plates to reach the point P. Remember this point was midway along the length of the plates. Now in the horizontal direction of motion, there is no force acting. And so we can just say distance is speed times time. Rearranging that, the time will be the distance divided by the initial horizontal velocity. Substitute the values and we have an answer of 1.0 times 10 to the minus 9 seconds. We now have to consider motion in the vertical direction and again we're considering motion until the electron reaches point P. It will therefore be travelling for a time of 1.0 times 10 to the minus 9 seconds. In the vertical direction we now do have an acceleration due to the electric field and so the final vertical velocity will be the initial velocity plus the acceleration times the time. The initial vertical velocity is zero. So we have V equals AT 
The value for acceleration was your answer to part 2 and the value for time was the answer to part 3. So bringing those values down and substitution leads to 1.2 times 10 to the 7 metres per second. Now we put the picture together. We are now aware that there is a horizontal velocity of 4 times 10 to the 7 metres per second and when it has reached P the vertical velocity is 1.2 times 10 to the 7. We want the resultant velocity, so this is a vector addition as represented by the diagram and we are finding the hypotenuse of this triangle. So using Pythagoras, V will be the square root of the sum of each of the sides squared. Notice if you spot that the two powers of 10 are the same, it wouldn't be essential to enter those into your calculator um, and you could just add in the power of 10 as 10 to the 7 at the end. Having found the magnitude of the velocity to be 4.2 times 10 to the 7 metres per second, it's straightforward to find the kinetic energy. So substitution into the equation, kinetic energy equals a half mv squared. So just bringing this number down. And that gives us an answer of 8 times 10 to the minus 16 joules. Now in the final part of this question you are asked to plot how the kinetic energy of the electron varies with the horizontal distance travelled through the electric field and beyond. The numbers on the x-axis are important for you to notice and respond to. 0 0.08 metres is the point at which the electron leaves the electric field due to the parallel plates. So what do we know about the kinetic energy as it enters the plates? Well it had an initial velocity so it has an initial kinetic energy and you must start your graph with a non-zero value. Whilst the electron is within the plates we know it experiences a force and an acceleration, so the velocity is increasing. The velocity is increasing uniformly, but remember, kinetic energy is proportional to velocity squared. That is the reason for this curved section of the graph. Finally, as the electron leaves the plates at 0 0.08 metres, it no longer experiences a force, therefore no acceleration, no change in velocity and a constant value for kinetic energy.